relations and functions. We're going to start off talking about functions and their graphs, but most of today should be reviewed from Algebra 1, so hopefully it'll come back to you as we talk about it. A relation is a set of pairs of input and output values. Now we're pairing input values, those are our x coordinates, and the output values are the y coordinates. Relations can be represented in the following ways. You should be familiar with all of these, but let's just go through them one at a time. Ordered pairs give the input and the output values together, so you're used to seeing these. These are coordinate points for the coordinate plane. A mapping diagram shows all the input values, the x coordinates in one and the y coordinates in the other, and the arrows show how to pair the inputs with the outputs. So because the four has two arrows coming out of it, that means we have two different points that have an x coordinate of four. The negative one has two arrows pointing towards it, which means we have two different points with the y coordinate of negative one. A table of values where you list your x's on the left side, y's on the right, and of course a graph where you can plot each of those points. The domain refers to the set of inputs of the ordered pairs of the relation. So again, the domain are, refers to the x coordinates represented in the relation. And the range is the set of outputs of the ordered pairs of the relation. So the range represents all of the y coordinates in the relation. A function is a relation in which each element of the domain corresponds with exactly one element of the range. That means that each element of the x goes with exactly one y-coordinate. So you cannot have an x-coordinate go to two different y-coordinate points. The vertical line test. If a vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph of a relation, then the relation is not a function. So you can only use this when you have a graph of your relation and you need a straight vertical line. And as it passes through your graph, as soon as it crosses through two or more points, see here our pink line crosses through our green relation in two different points, then we can say that this is not a function. Let's take it over to our purple graph. As we take our vertical line through our purple graph, at any given moment, it only crosses through one point at a time on the graph. Because it passes the vertical line test, this relation is a function. The rest of today's lesson is just going to be working through some examples. So first, we want to state whether each relation is a function, and if it is, identify the domain and range, and we want to use interval notation when possible. So the first example, this is our mapping example with our x-coordinates and our y-coordinates. So remember we said each x-coordinate can only go to one y-coordinate, but see here how the one has two different arrows coming out of it. That means we have two different points that have an x-coordinate of one we also have two different points that have an x-coordinate of 4. So therefore, this is not a function. Now the domain, this is going to be the set of all the x-coordinates. This, we're going to use braces to just list the different x-coordinates. And then for the range, we're going to also use braces to list the y-coordinates. So we have negative 2, and generally you want to put these in order, 1, 3, and 4. Okay. Now the second one, the second example we do have a graph, so we are able to use the vertical line test. So I'm just going to take this line and see how it passes through each point. Only one, only one, only one, only one, only one, and only one. Because it only passed through one point at a time, we can say that this is a function. And then again, when we list the domain and range, we want to use the braces 
to list all the values. So for the domain, we have negative 4, and then negative 2, negative 1, we have positive 1, positive 2, and positive 4. So those are the elements of our domain. Now we need to do the range. So we want to start from the bottom. So this is going to be negative 5. And then we have negative 1. We have this one is at 0. And then we have two points at positive 1, which is fine. You can use the y coordinates more than once. And then we have positive 2. This is the last example we're going to walk through together. And since we have a graph, we can use the vertical line test again. So I'm just going to take our vertical line and go through our graph. And at any given point, it only crosses through the relation once. So we can say, yes, this is a function. Now, in listing the domain and range, we don't have a grid like this to be able to count the values. So what we want to do is use interval notation to describe all the possible x values and all the possible y values in this function. So we're going to start with the x's from 0. And as we go, this graph continues to go in the negative x direction. And this arrow tells us it's going to go on forever. So even though you can't see it, this graph is going to continue forever, even off the computer screen, into the negative x direction. So we want our lower bound to be negative infinity. And because infinity isn't a number that we can include, we use the parentheses. And then when we go in the positive x direction, same thing. That arrow means it's going to keep going forever in the positive x direction. So the upper bound is going to be the positive infinity. And then we're also going to close that off with parentheses. Now, when we look at the y coordinates, do we have any y values in the negative direction? We don't. The smallest y value we have is 0. And because that is a number that is included, we're going to use a brace and start this with 0 as the lowest y value. Then, as these both sides go up, they're going to go up forever into positive y values. So we're going to put a positive infinity as our highest value. And again, because it's not a number that we can cap off, we're going to use a parenthesis. Now, using the examples that we've worked through, I want you to go ahead and take some time, work through these three, see what you get, whether it's a function or not, find the domain, find the range, and then check back with me when you're done. So go ahead and press pause and try these examples on your own. For example number four, hopefully you got that yes, it's a function, and for the domain, inside of the braces, you should have negative 3, 1, 3, and 4. And then for the range, negative 2, 1, and 3. Number 5, it is not a function. The domain is negative 4, negative 2, 1, 3. And the range is negative 4, negative 1, 1, 4. Example 6, yes, it is a function. And the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity with parentheses. And the range is also negative infinity to positive infinity with parentheses. OK, these are the last three examples. So again, I want you to pause, take some time to work these out on your own, and then check back with me when you finish to see if you got them right. Now for these last three examples, example 7 is not a function. The domain is negative 2, 0, 1, 3, and the range is negative 1, 0, 1, 2. For example 8, you should have gotten no. This is not a function. Now, because it's a circle, we don't actually have any x or y values here, 
And so we can't list the domain and range. We have to be given the values of the x and y coordinates here on the edge of the circle to be able to list the domain and range. So this one, hopefully you left it blank. For example, 9, this is a function. The domain goes from 0 to infinity. And because 0 is a number and it includes 0, we can cap it off with the bracket. And then the range also goes from 0 to positive infinity and we can cap off zero with a bracket. Hopefully you got these correct. That's it for today. Now remember, if you had any questions while we were going through the notes, make sure to submit them on the unit website and we'll go over it next class.